But there's so many things they can be proud of in Wigan. There's the Northern Soul that was a, a, a huge part of the music scene in the 1970s. George Orwell wrote his famous book where he studied the working class from up there. But the thing that they are most proud of, it seems, because here is the, the thing they've got the statue of in the very soulless bit of the shopping centre, is this chap, George Formby. And I thought, that's odd, because he's not someone you would imagine going, no, we're so proud of him. But once you look into the world of George Formby, it was, it was fascinating. For people who don't know, he was someone who made these black and white films. He played a little banjo lady, sort of sang slightly saucy songs in the 40s and 50s. But it turns out he was married to a woman called Beryl. Just after the war, they were sent to do some shows in South Africa, just as apartheid was being set up. And they were told they had to play to whites-only audiences. So when they got there, they managed somehow to arrange it that there were always dozens and dozens of black people in the audience. And the government found out about this, and they became really cross and told them off and said, you can't do this anymore. So they went into Soweto and into the, the poorest areas, and they did nine free concerts. And at this point, the man who was about to become the first apartheid prime minister of South Africa confronted Mr and Mrs Formby in public and said, if you do anything like this again at all, you will be deported from the country. To which it is recorded, Mrs Formby replied by saying, then piss off, you're a horrible little man. Right? <laughs> and they were taken under an armed guard back to the airport and flown back to Britain and never allowed back again. So George Formby and his wife were the world's first ever anti-apartheid activists. That's mad, it's like finding out that Des O'Connor spent five years fighting with Che Guevara or something, it's just mad, isn't it? 